Amen. Amen. All right, Alvon, do you mind just taking us through your amazing round today and when the momentum started kicking in for you? Yeah, I mean, it was a great round, you know, 66, bogey-free. That's really all I can ask for. Um, I think I really just clicked on my putting routine for the first time. Um, my game's been really solid for the past two weeks, but I think I finally really start to understand how I have to approach putts, and it just, you know, rolled them great all day. I had tons of opportunities and just very pleased with my round. And 66, I know you have a story there with your brother and a little bit of family <laughs> rivalry. Do you mind just walking us through how that even began and yeah. the story there? Yeah, so actually this is a pretty special place for me. I caddied for my brother here when he qualified for U.S. Juniors. Uh, he shot 68 and won in a playoff with a birdie. So this entire week he was like, you just have to beat my score. And so we had this little family competition going. So I'm kind of happy I beat him, to be honest. <laughs> Did you already see like his reaction? Yes, he was like, you beat me by two. All right, he owes me a coffee, I think. Aww. <laughs> what year was that? Uh, it was probably 218 or something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, we just heard on your interview with Karen Stupples about all the health challenges. You I didn't know you'd had your appendix out, for example. Walk us through what all has happened. Yeah, definitely 2020 was pretty challenging. I had a very bad nerve injury in my neck. Um, I just couldn't feel, you know, pretty much from my neck down to my fingers, um, just constantly playing in pain. So the end of 2020 was very challenging for me. And then I had a stomach problem that led to my appendix being flared and I had to get it removed. And then I got COVID. So I spent a lot of time in bed for the past five months. Uh, so I'm just really, you know, appreciative to be out on the course now. And I think I just don't take it all for granted just because I know how hard it can get and just happy to be playing again. Wow. So when, when did the nerve situation start? Um, the nerve situation really started late August. Um, kind of started with a bad shoulder and, you know, just pain from neck down. And I just... You know, after KPMG, I was like, I can't play anymore. So that's why I really stopped the season there because mm -hmm. I could barely finish my rounds. Um, it really wow. got to the point where I, I was just not comfortable on the golf course. I was just playing through pain, and I think mentally it was really tough, um, not only physically. So took a lot of time off, and then just the panics followed, and then COVID. So it's been a challenging couple months. Well, was there a diagnosis that went with the, with the nerve? Um, um, probably like a brachial plexus injury, um, so just some nerve damage, um, probably – below my armpit they quite they weren't quite sure exactly what it was but it pretty much felt like a pinched nerve um i thought i had a herniated disc i had so many mris and and tests but i'm just glad i'm able to hit a golf club again and just feel good <laughs> when did you have the appendix out i had the appendix out in november so my brother got it while i was at Shoprite, and i got it a month after so. wow <laughs> wow it's been crazy a... <laughs> and when did you get COVID? and i got COVID a month ago so Wow. Just over a month ago, so it was two weeks in bed. How? What were your symptoms with COVID? I had every single symptom from the fever, shortness of breath, body aches, loss of smell, taste. Wow. Um, everything. Were you worried <laughs> that you wouldn't be able to play these two events? Yeah, I was not. You know, definitely in November I hit pretty bottom low. I uh, think mm. mentally was really tough, just being constant pain from, you know, my shoulder was not getting better. And just my stomach was in so much pain, just recovering from the panics. It took me a month out where I couldn't exercise. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, I think then my mom said, you know what, go back home, like stop seeing doctors, just like go see friends, like reset your mind. Cause I think if you're stronger mentally, you're going, your body's going to follow. I think I was just in a very bad state and, um, it, it was definitely a grind. Um, but I'm just happy with the way it's coming out and just happy to be on a golf course. right How now. How soon were you able to hit balls again after all of that? Uh, I didn't hit balls for a solid. I really started hitting in December. So I stopped in October and mid-December, that's when I started hitting shots. And I was basically chipping and putting for a very long time. But, you know, I think in 2020, I was really rushing my swing. And with my dad, we've really worked on just slowing down. And I think it's just helped my entire body. It's helped my state of mind. And I just feel calmer when I'm on the golf course. You're I have a question. You're a huge family person, it sounds like. And your yeah. dad's caddying for you this week. Mm -hmm. I mean, just how... How amazing of a how amazing of support do you feel from your family? How important is that to you as a golfer? Oh, it's huge. I wouldn't be the person I am t or where I am today without my family. And it's just so special to have my dad. And I think really going into this season, we said we're going to keep it a very simple family business. You know, my dad is my coach. He's my uh, my mentor. My mom does everything for me too. And my brother is also my coach, you know, from home. So we're just trying to keep it simple and just to have fun. And I think that way I enjoy golf even more just because I keep it simple. And just the way I learned is with my family. And you and your brother 
practice together and learn from each other? Yeah, we always practice together. So now he's a freshman at SMU. I don't get to see him that often. He's really enjoying his college experience, but I play with my dad pretty much every day, or at least after work, he always comes and watches me play. So it's fun too, to have them. What, what is the Hummingbird? Uh, that's Andrew Harper. Um, it's a luxury travel um, agency, and I just started with them this season. They out of the Bahamas? Uh, no, U.S. Okay. It's a U.S. company. Is your dad going to be on the bag for most of the year? Or is this no, no, dad? dad has to work. Dad's been having conferences <laughs> like at 4 in the morning. So Whoa. I think he's up and having some phone calls right now. He's just always working. We just said it would be fun for the first two weeks to get back into the season. Just mm. a bit of an easier transition for me. Yeah, I, it sounds like there's probably no one that's happier to have a second rookie season than you. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> I'm really happy to have a second one because the first one was not good. But I think, you know, and just – I think my expectations were a bit all over the place, and it was definitely a huge disappointment. Um, but overall, I mean, there were so many things that just I couldn't control, just being injured and having so many health issues. So mm. for me, 2021, even if we're not out of COVID, I mean, it's a huge reset button for me. So just happy with where I am right now. Well, speaking of the reset, you, not only do you get to reset the season, you get to reset the priorities. So what, mm -hmm. what are your goals for 2021 now? Um, you know, I just really try to take it tournament by tournament. I know um, that my game's there. I know I can compete on this tour, and I just feel more comfortable than last year just because I'm really in my own bubble. I just focus on what I know to do, and so just playing tournament by tournament at this point. We know we have, you have to go practice, Alvon. Thank you so much, and good Thank luck you. in the weekend. Thank you so much. Hey, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Great to see you. Yeah.